This lesson is about running searches and aggregations with Elasticsearch. This is where Elasticsearch shines. It can perform quick searches and powerful aggregations. Before we run the queries and aggregations, let's index some sample data. So in the working files, you would have a prepare index shell script. This will delete the video search index if it exists, and will put another one in its place with some predefined settings and mappings. Mappings being the schema of your documents on which we will concentrate later. Now to index the actual documents, we have another shell script. This one will take some videos that we have stored and put them in Elasticsearch under the video search index. So now we have some data. We're ready for our first search. If you look at the URL, the address will determine where the query will run. In this case, we connect to Elasticsearch's host and port, obviously, then we have the video search index. This will run our search only in the video search index. For example, you can look into a particular type by specifying the type. This will filter on the type field. You can also put an index pattern, for example, video star to search on multiple indices. And you can skip the index part altogether to search in everything. Then we have the search endpoint and the query string itself in the queue parameter. In this case, we are searching for a file in the title field. The JSON reply starts with how long our query took. In this case, it was 4 milliseconds, whether it timed out, which shards participated to our query, and then it goes to the hits. We get some statistics, and then for each hit, we have its address, the index, the type, the ID, and then we have its score. Now the score determines how relevant a document is to our query. And it does that by looking at how many times the query terms appear in the document versus how many times it appear in other documents. Also by default, we get back the predefined source field, which contains the original JSON that we've indexed. One more important thing to note here is that both the query and the text in the document is analyzed by default. So our query was looking for Rafal, all uppercase, and this document, for example, contains Rafal with this funny L. This would only match if both those fields were analyzed. Now, of course, we can do more full text searches than just looking for a single term. For example, this query will look for Rafal in the title field or Radu in the title field. And we have to URL encode. Normally, there's a space here between each of the clauses. Now we get documents that either match Rafal or Radu, and if they match both, they will have a higher score. And then there's more. For example, you can add some fuzziness to your searches, or you can influence the score by the number of likes or views of a video. But this becomes complicated or impossible with a simple URI request. The URI requests that we've seen so far are typically used only as a shortcut. What you would do in practice within your application is to specify the query in the JSON payload of your request. I typically prefer to do this from Emacs by using Elasticsearch mode. ES mode is something you can download and install to your Emacs installation. Here you can specify what kind of request you want, whether it's put or post or get, and the address. In this case, we have video search. We hit the search endpoint and specify the pretty flag. And then under it, we would have the JSON payload. This JSON query is much more verbose than the previous one we saw, but it's much easier to read and to maintain. For example, we can see that it's a query of type match that looks in the title field for the terms Rafal and Radu and uses the OR operator. And we get the same results. Now, Elasticsearch can do a lot of stuff when it comes to full text search. But let's also look at the analytics side. Now let's assume for the results of our video search, we want to see what are the uploaders that uploaded our videos. For example, imagine you have a UI where you would show your video results, but also a place in this UI where you would show these popular uploaders, the ones with more videos, for example, and allow a user to click on one of the uploaders in order to filter for videos only uploaded by that person. And this is what you would get by running this aggregation. After the results of your query, you can see the list of uploaders. To run this aggregation, you would put the aggregations key in your JSON payload. And here for each aggregation, you would have to decide on a name. This one is called top uploaders. And then you have the aggregation type. In this case, we have a terms aggregation. 
And then we have the options specific for each type. In this case, we are looking in the uploaded by field. This particular field that we call .verbatim is not analyzed. And this allows Elasticsearch to get you the exact content of that field as the result. Otherwise, in this case, if the field was analyzed, you would get new thinking and communication separately. Also, when a field is not analyzed, you would have doc values on it. And doc values is an efficient structure that Elasticsearch can use for aggregations. It would calculate at index time a structure that is the opposite of the inverted index. So if the inverted index is a mapping between your terms and the document IDs, with doc values you have the mapping between a document ID and what terms you have in a specified field, in this case uploaded by that verbatim. This allows Elasticsearch to run a query on the inverted index and get the document IDs of documents that match your query and then take those IDs and look at the actual values and build these buckets of documents that contain, in this case, every uploader. Now this bucketed approach also allows Elasticsearch to do other operations on the documents matching your query. For example, let's imagine that we also want to get the total number of views for the videos uploaded by each uploader. In this case, we would put another aggregations key under our top uploaders, and this aggregation would be a sum aggregation on the views field. What this will do effectively is also keep in mind the number of views when building the buckets. So for each bucket, you will also get the total number of views. We can also sort the buckets by the number of views instead of the number of documents. In this lesson, we scratch the surface of Elasticsearch's full text search and analytics capabilities. Here we dealt with the essentials, for example, how many queries analyze your text in order to get you flexible matching, and how aggregations use doc values to build buckets and perform computations on documents matching your query. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.